Hey everyone, I just wanted to do a quick video today to show off kind of my performance setup. Show off, to explain my performance setup. So, um, yeah, basically, this is the main ingredient here. This is this max patch that I wrote that's called Floating World. Um, my set looks like this. Pretty straightforward. I try to keep it straightforward most of the time when I'm playing. So you can see I exported my stems. And in this one, I was even more minimal than I usually am. So uh, I really just got uh, these. These are the two main like synth part things, and then a, a thing for effects. And then these are all my drums. Um, I've also got a little bit of extra stuff that I added here. That's probably for a transition or something. And then um, when I'm playing with it. Uh, that's where the goodness of the of the floating world thing comes in. So set it up like this. Start playing. It's a bit of latency in the audio, so forgive me. And then what I do is I press Option five times, which you can set up in uh, the properties so that it turns off your mouth. And then I can use these to control different things. Got your main sections here. This is the uh, this is the trackpad, and as you can see with that, um, it controls. You can you can have up to four touch points. In a real trackpad, you can have. Oh, um, in the real trackpad, the, there's up to eleven touch points. But I just felt like this is already so much control that I didn't even quite know what to do with it yet at that point. And uh, and yeah, so. If you're controlling two different parameters, or if you're controlling with one touch point, you can control three different parameters, right? So you can have effect on off, oops, as you can see with this little guy here, on off, and you've got X or Y position here, uh, X position here, and then you've also got the size of the touch point. I don't know if you guys can see that from where you're sitting, but as I lay my finger down, it really changes that value. So you can really change a lot of stuff at the same time, just with one. So once you put two on the table, you've got a whole lot of control. Uh, it's a little bit fumbly, but I think that's part of what makes it interesting. So here, what I've got lined up on the, the keyboard, these are all just individual on-off kind of momentary buttons, right? So what I can do is just turn on, turn on one effect that's controlled by, say, these two fingers or another effect that's controlled by these three, or the fourth one, maybe the fourth one's just controlled by the fourth fourth point, which would be the red one. 
uh, and such and so forth. Uh, I've also got these lined up so that these keys, uh, like this key row, this key row, this key row, is um, they're lined up to the track. So I've got that one synth layer here, second synth layer, synth layer there. Oh no, other way around. First synth layer there, second synth layer there, and the third um, or the drums are there, and then master track effects are here. And I've also, I believe, got some uh, kind of buffer shuffler stuff over here. So you can kind of jump around in the beat and do little repeats. Um, uh, down here, what, what I usually have set up, like this is set up like a giant XY pad, so I can just I can just drag my finger around and control, you know, two parameters of something, uh, and that lets me to do kind of cool things that you couldn't do, or that you would do by like, you know, fucking hell. Um, it's really confusing if you don't turn off the mouse. Um, so that's the kind of thing that you'd have to, you know, move your mouse around like this for. But in here, or in this section, I've got these kind of standard points that it goes to. And you get this kind of cool stepped effect. I usually set up a delay with this so that you get this, like, big delay. And then I set it so that the X value, when it hits zero, also turns off the effect. So this row is mute. Um, and then down here, this is what I usually use for like long-term effects, like things that I'm not going to do a lot. Or um, as I used to do in one of my live shows, I'd have like an LFO uh, speed here. So I could just drag my finger around like this, and that would control the speed of the LFO. Um, I don't use these a whole ton because they're a bit weird. Um, I can't often think of good uses for them. They're sort of good for something that you want to like. Say I want to say I really want to be playing with the filter or the filter delays here, which is what I've got here. Uh, but every once in a while, I want to increment another value, and I want to do that uh, myself instead of having that automated in. Then, uh, then that's what these would be good for, and you can do the same thing here. In interpolate, I do that a fair bit. There's a couple things that I like to have a bit more control over since um, there's quite a difference in the show or in the show about like how. Uh, you know how intense it gets and where those kind of peaks and valleys are so so I have extra control over that by using these sliders so uh, and then yeah this is just six banks of sliders the way they're set up you can map them to anything um, the way that I have them set up now is uh, uh, volume and filter of uh, filter delay on one speed and one at another speed, one at another speed, and what I had in the past also was that one of these would control like this would be twice the speed for the filter delays and this would be half the speed, but my sets usually vary quite a lot in BPM and I'll do that quite often where it's like two songs that are at the same BPM, but I'll have it or double it so that my effects do different things in the next song. Uh, these ones I think are just filter delays like in the other one, but oftentimes I'll use this one as a distortion or something and then, uh, you know, just have some other things or like say there's some key element that you want to bring in at a certain time, you could have those set up here too. Um, these are kind of nice because you can do like one sweep across will uh, set all your things. So one of the things that I like to do is just kind of creep my hand in like this and just do some kind of wiggly stuff in there and then when I want it to be quiet I just go like this so a lot of the times on stage you'll see me going like this and I don't usually perform like this I usually perform with the laptop this way so that people can see my screen you know if the people are in front of me this way then they'll see my this way then they'll see my screen um, but that would have made it more difficult to film this uh, anyway so that's it. Uh, oh yeah, and then the other thing that I did in here to just sort of simplify my life is uh, one second. I'm just gonna zero everything out. Uh, is these are for mapping. So if I want to map the x y size or on off of any of these, I've got that right here. So I don't have to try and like turn it on, do it, and turn it off. Here are the sliders on the top, the sliders on the bottom, and then you've got keyboard x y. So that's this guy, key, uh, keyboard, row one, row two, row three, row four, row four uh, this way. And then these ones you can just turn on and off yourself 
to map it. So it makes it quite easy to uh, play a show with and have quite a lot of control. I honestly haven't even reached half of the potential of what this thing could, can do because you can have so many key combinations and shit. Um, that's one of the things that I'm looking forward to experimenting more with now is like, uh, you know, having modifier keys of like this key and this key together. Uh, this key and this key together makes one sound turn on and then these two make another sound turn on and that does something else and then this is another modifier for that. And that goes hand in hand with the generative stuff that I'm working on because I'm hoping to in the future not be controlling just uh you know not just like kind of the smaller elements of the music but I want to I want to control the compositional part of the music too uh so I'm yeah I'm writing a bunch of generative stuff so that I can control that but I can con so that I can control a lot more than just like okay now I'm turning up the sound of the hi hat or fucking and the filter or something like that like I'm trying to create these sort of zoomed out uh, macro controls. I don't know if macro is the right word, but anyways, you get it. So, see you soon uh, on Twitch. I think I'm going to be streaming on Twitch again maybe this weekend or Monday, so stay tuned for that. And until then, that's it.